Oh shit. Oh. Yo, what up, booms? Good morning, afternoon, and evening. Welcome to the Soul Shakers. So what's been going on? You have a kid at Wednesday Night Fights on stream who doesn't know who Alex Vai is. Possible racism at CEO. The Red Bull Committee qualifiers, and to top it off, the Dragon Ball Fighters go tour with a $60,000 prize pool. Whoa, it is so damn good to be a fighting game player right now. But hey, if you're in the FGC, make yourself seen because no matter who you are where you are be it Timbuktu or the land down under we want your stories that bring the thunder much love to Omen by HP and standing fierce like usual so come on man let's go you know how we do welcome to the super soul shaker podcast Drax Well, hello again for those who are here. I have got Yahozi with me. How are you doing, girl? I'm doing good. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing really well. Um, so could you just tell us about your, your name? Like, is it Dawn? Is it Hosey? I'm hearing quite a few. Yeah, things. it's 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 weird. I'm called three different things, like, depending on where I am. Um, my name is Dawn, D-A-W-N, Hosey. Uh, well, you could probably glean the spelling from that from my gamer tag, which is Yahozi. Um, but pretty much everyone in the FGC who knows me calls me Don. Everyone who doesn't know me calls me a Hosey. And then at work, I'm called Hosey. Because I guess it just sounds cool. So that's where the name comes from. Okay. Hosey, your Hosey, real easy. You didn't want to go for something, like, did you ever think about having, like, a completely different, like, style to your name? Because I'm always interested <laughs> when people just use their own name. Yeah, it's it's weird because Yohosi is like a mix of a gamer tag and my name. Um, I actually so I started fighting games when I was in college in Tampa, and I didn't have a like I had an online name, but it was kind of lame, and I like bounced between stuff um, from like World of Warcraft and shit. And I was at a local talking with Tampa Bison, and I'm like, dude, I don't know what my name should be. I say Yo a lot. Should my name just be Yo? And he's like, Nah, that sucks. How about Yo Hosey? And I'm like, all right, that sounds rad. Done. Lock that down. <laughs> so it was a real simple story, but now everyone calls me either Yoshi, Yohashi, trying to make it Japanese. Like, no, it's it's Yo Hosey. <laughs> well, come to think of it, when I first heard your name, I thought it was some kind mm -hmm. of Japanese anime character type thing. No, that's the mix up. That's the mix up. <laughs> I don't even watch anime. Screw that. You're not an anime watcher, but you play an anime type. Yeah, fighting game. yeah, yeah. No, I feel you. So you've yeah, just come... huh? Sorry, no. So you've just come back from um, CEO, and before that, Summit of Power. Um, overall, mm -hmm. how do you think you went in your in your tournament progression? So it's it's weird, right? Summit of Power, I got washed, um, and it was like I'm not gonna sleep on my game plan, like my gameplay. I think my gameplay was a lot weaker than the other players. Um, but in casuals, I was doing pretty well. Not against, you know, Goichi. Goichi washed me harder than anyone. Not against Sonic Fox. Sonic Fox washed me not as hard, but I got washed. Um, against the other players, I was doing perfectly fine. Um, it was a tournament nerve issue, which I'm still trying to overcome. And at CEO, I didn't place as well as I wanted to. I think I got, like, 25th. But 
I felt that my tournament nerves have sort of started to level out. And I think a lot of people focus on the results rather than the progress. So I'm actually pretty happy with how I did. I'm not thrilled, um, but I'm not disappointed, if that makes sense. Yeah. So in terms of progression, like you said, like you definitely see like progress there. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, we, we're all getting, everyone in Dragon Ball is getting better every day. Some at different rates. Um, you know, everyone has their plateaus that they have to overcome and then they kind of go through a spike. Um, there's a few players now that are going through that spike. Like Beyond Toxin is getting really good really quickly after, um, well, I don't want to say plateauing because the game's so new, but, um, watching his play at, com at uh, CEO, excuse me, was mind blowing. And I know that if I keep grinding, I'll have that moment too. Um, it's just about, you know, getting over the mental game for me personally. Yeah. Um, a lot of people forget that a lot of these, pretty much every other top Dragon Ball player has been a top player in another game. Um, I'm kind of the first player that has never been a top player in anything. I'm, I'm pretty much the freshest face in the Dragon Ball scene. So there's a lot of things that like other players have experience with that I really don't, but I'm getting there just from traveling a lot and caring about the game yeah well you seem to have come quite a, a bit you know you seem to have come quite far con considering the time like you were saying you know a lot of players have come from mm -hmm. other games um i just want to mention uh go briefly over you said you're in your previous interview you were talking about how you know tampa bison you get along well with him and sonic fox and stuff is there any friendly exchange between such players like sonic fox and goichi to you or is it just strictly business Oh yeah, me and Sonic Fox are homies. Like, like really, it's it's everyone. Um, I mean, it's harder to talk to the Japanese players because they don't speak um, English that well. But the two that do, um, Tachikawa and me are, are tight. Uh, I like Tachikawa a lot, and we both play the same team. Um, except now I play Android 16, so uh, not the same team anymore. But we both play the Shell of Gotenks Kid Buu, which is something to bond over. Mm. Um, and then Dogra, um, we have trouble communicating, but like we say hi and we smoke cigarettes together and say what's up and chill. So I, I, th there's really no one in the Dragon Ball community I'm, I, I don't like or isn't friendly towards me. Yeah. <clears throat> Despite the language barrier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all say hi. You know, we all wave, we all smile if there's a language barrier. Um, have Lord Knight translate, you know, one of those things. So. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> So you live in um, California, in Kelly. Yep, NorCal. And um, I just want to, hoping you could go over your team, uh, Coalition. Yeah, so Coalition is they're based in um, uh, they're based in LA, so they're based in Southern California. Um, they're just a really cool group of guys. They're mostly from the NRS scene, um, and they're a team on the come up. They they actually take really good care of me, despite um, they used to be Team Hara. Um, which was actually seen as a little bit of a joke in the NRS community, and they rebranded to Coalition and they upped their game a lot. Um, I'm actually super excited to be with them. I think that they're all really cool people. Um, and they're the epitome of not esports, which is something I like. So I'm, I'm cool with that. Not, they're, they're not esports in a way that isn't like offensive. They're not, e they're not esports in a way that's like, like we don't care, like have fun. Like we're here to play video games, have a great time, like, um, they're, they're just a really great group of guys that treat me really well. So I have nothing but great things to say about them. That's cool. I guess when you think about esports teams, there's always that <clears throat> thought of, you know, achievement and where you placed in tournaments, but it's good that they just emphasize the fact that, you know, we care about you. We just want you to play and that's it. Yeah. They're really about self-improvement, right? Like, um, a lot of... Early on, I went to tournaments that were relatively small, so I, I think I got top 8 at every tournament I went to at Toll Combo Breaker, which is like Evo Light, right? Mm. So getting... I think I got 33rd at Combo Breaker and 25th at CEO. Um, it might have been 40-something at Combo Breaker. I'm not really sure. Uh, I don't really check my standings after a tournament if I don't make top 16. Um, but... Um, they're really happy with how I'm growing as a player, and also, you know, I have a big Twitter following. I, I, I'm well known in the community, so that helps, you know, it, it's not all about tournament placings, although for me, it's all about tournament placings, so. Just a question, if you get totally bodied, because you, you know, you try to take this seriously, do you go back and watch your match clips? Yeah, 
I, I watch all my match clips. I didn't watch Summit because I was pretty embarrassed, to be honest. I watched the side stream where you I did, didn't have to You did really well. I, I watched it. No, I got really bodied. Well. I got bodied. Are you kidding me? I, I went 0-12. That sucks. But you know what? It, it's 0-12, but it was... I was so fucking shaky. Like, I... I couldn't believe how stressed I was. Um... So I didn't watch those matches, but I watched my combo breaker matches. I am currently in the middle of studying my CEO matches, especially for Sonic Fox, um, because swear. his I don't know I've never fought a really good Android 18 except Beyond Toxin and Sonic Fox and Beyond Toxin. Um, they play very different, and also I've one I've never watched my matches with, with Beyond Toxin because we've never fought on stream uh, offline, and also. Um, when I fought Beyond Toxin, he was not as good as Sonic Fox. I think now he's getting to that level, if not almost there. So, uh, I'm studying to learn how to beat both of them. Um, through watching my matches, going to the lab, seeing where I screwed up. Like, what's real, what's not real, what could I have done here? I think it's really important. Uh, otherwise you're just gonna kinda just grind online all day and learn nothing. Like, you have to watch your matches. Yeah. I, unfortunately, am one of those players where if I... If there's one match that I get absolutely destroyed, like no particle of me exists, I really yeah. find it hard to watch. I'll eventually watch it, but I kind of watch it midway. <laughs> I don't watch the full clip. I just want to see that little like slice of heaven. Oh yeah, I, I did okay-ish. Yeah, I beat I beat this person. Hey, no, um, I have so I'm working with a mindset coach, and he's making me watch my matches. Like he forces me because I used to be that player too. Um, I still kind of am. I still hate it, but I I do it. I just grip my teeth, mute the sound, watch, and I have training mode open simultaneously. And I just reenact every scene and say, okay, how could I have blocked that? And was me getting hit here a mistake or just a guess that went wrong, right? Like, where did I lose this match? I think that's important. So that's actually something I learned from Hearthstone is um, there's a concept in that game where you play to win, not to make the safest option. And learning when your decision making was risky but correct because you're behind and learning when it was risky and wrong because you were ahead like that's what you learn from watching matches that plus defending against setups yeah i get you <clears throat> yeah so obviously we all know you for being the go-to girl for gotenks um, yeah in your opinion um what separates gotenks from the rest of the dragon ball fighters cast he's hard he's that hard. <laughs> <laughs> he's hard, he, yeah. he looks pretty... He, I don't know. I, I guess I have a simple mindset. Like, you know, he does that spinning cocoon attack, and I'm like, ooh, five hits. Oh, yeah, that's like bullshit. One. Yeah, I know. But I thought, oh, wow, he's 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 pretty easy. No, he's actually uh, quite a hard character. So if you do his B&B, &B, uh, it's easy. Um, but where he really is difficult in his pressure, um, shout cancels... Or I call it honk honk, but apparently now we're doing calling it shout cancels. I didn't catch on. Rip. Um... So shout cancel ID is not insanely difficult, but it can be. Um, there's a lot of option selects baked into high level Gotenks play that I think a lot of players don't do, which makes them appear easy. And also Ghost Okizemi is not easy. Um, only because if you... So Ghost Okizemi, if you don't know, is when you set the set up the boys in the corner after knockdown. Um, there's, there's multiple levels of advanced Ghost Okizemi. Um, there's like the three where you, we, there's one where you put all four ghosts in the corner. That's relatively easy. Um, there's one where you backdash and you care cancel a 5S into the ghosts. That one's kind of hard. And there's one where if you're super jump installed, you um, directional influence backwards on the way down. And then two ghosts hit meaty and two ghosts hit light or two ghosts float. And then you negative edge the ghosts to release. Um, just because of that, that alone makes go times hard. Um, and you also can't just shoot ghosts and do some bullshit and hope it works. You kind of got to react to what they're doing. Like, if you backdash and they reflect, you have to react to hard tag and you have to react to nothing. Um, th there's just a lot of pressure that looks simple, but in reality, there's a lot of logic and OSs baked behind it. And even his standard mix-up, the auto combo ID jump H with 2L, um, that is a... Not easy thing to do, um, only because you have to hit confirm into it off two lights. So um, if you're thinking like, you know, on Street Fighter, like light, light, super, it, you know, is a, is a motion, so it's a little harder. Yeah. But the same concept applies because if you do 2L, 5L, 5L, and auto combo comes out, 
and you didn't confirm it and they reflected, you 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 die. Um, so there's a lot of hit confirming. There's a lot of option selects baked in, um, and even his standard. Th there's a lot of shit going on with Gotenks. He's he is a hard character. I think Zamasu might be harder now that he's out, but Gotenks is one of the hardest characters in the game. Did you always like Gotenks <laughs> um, before he was a part of the roster, or did you? Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. That kid. The <laughs> he is an asshole. <laughs> I didn't like. He's a little. He's a little. Little jerk. I didn't like him at all in the, in the anime. Um, I did watch Dragon Ball. I don't watch anime, but I watched Dragon Ball. Um, I didn't hate him, but I didn't like him. I definitely didn't like him. Um, but when I saw him in game, I was like, "Oh, this character is cool." Like, like seeing how he played it really solidified that I liked this character a lot. Okay. Well, um, I just want to. So you have your infamous. Gotenks tech video, which I think has over 4,000 views at least. And I, and I find the description really funny because in the title, I think you said it's a 10 minute video and then the right. description said it's 12 and then you said you would, it'll, you it were able for it to be five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, it, did you, yeah. yeah, did uh -huh. you have so. many people hitting you up for, for any Gotenks, uh, advice after that video dropped? Yeah, I did. I actually, my mentions or my my DMs have a lot of people asking for Gotenks help, uh, which I supply. I, I try to. I try to answer all of them. But I'm actually releasing a more as part of my summit voting incentive. Um, I've already filled most of the coaching incentives because um, you know when people vote for you, you want to supply them with more than just the swag that they're given, right? They're paying for a service. Yeah. So I'm releasing uh, soon a Gotenks tutorial that's like more in depth, more produced, less loud, I guess, because the style of that video was like, hey, I got 10 minutes to make this video, I'll do it real quick, here you go, now you know how to play Gotex. This one's more like going over the nitty gritty, going over all the normals in more detail, here's the potential for the character, but the reality of the character is this, um, just a little bit more structured, I guess. Um, which hopefully will answer everyone's Gotex questions. I think that that video provides a lot of value to a character that has a lot of depth. And hopefully ease up the the DMs on your Twitter, right? Oh yeah, no, no, it'll make it'll. I'll get more. Trust me, <laughs> that's how it works. I'll get more. How how many how fine. many Gotenks messages do you get? Oh, do you want me to check right now? Oh, I can no, check right now. Yeah, if you want, or just just curious, like on you know how often how often do you get hit up for Gotenk stuff, and you're just in a situation where you can't really answer Gotenk stuff right now? Um, I probably get about two or three a week. Um, is, is a good average. Yeah, about two or three a week. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, I hmm? sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. No, no, you go. You go. You go right. Oh, okay. So I, I think that like the character is starting to come into its own, where the people that actually like the game a lot are at the like the people that play the game right now know fighting games enough to understand just by looking at Go Tanks what makes Go Tanks good. Um. But I think that the character still has misunderstandings. Like, I was showing Sonic Fox Gotenks things at Summit, and his mind was freaking blown at some of the things you can do with this character. So, there, there's a lot to learn. So, all questions are welcome, if you're listening to this. I do not mind. Yeah, no, definitely, man. Definitely anyone's listening. So, with the characters now, um, in a previous interview you said, you know, characters like Cell and Adult Gohan, they're just way too strong and their pressure is just unbelievable. <clears throat> yeah. And then you've got Freezer, who I think you said would be the weakest. Now, up until now, do you still believe... Like, have your thoughts changed at all? Uh, I think my thoughts have changed. I think Frieza got a small buff in his 2H, which actually helps a lot. I think I actually mentioned this in the Born Free interview, where his 2H didn't hit above him. So if you got Super Dash directly above, you had to do some sort of finagling to 2H. Um, that got fixed. His 2H is a lot better now. I, I still think Frieza's bad. Like, I don't think Frieza's good, I don't think you should play Frieza, but I think you can play Frieza, because he has a low 2L. Um, I would say that Beerus is still the worst character in the game, and I still stand by that Cell is the best character in the game. Uh, Don't Go Long got nerfed, so he's he's still up there, though. He's still, like, top 6, top 7, um, but Cell is still a monster. So out of Cell and Adult Gohan, uh, which character gives you the most trouble? Oh, Cell. Easy. Just Cell is... Cell's dumb. <laughs> he's dumb? Yeah, he's he's cheap. You know, like, like the, the top the top three characters in this game are all so 50-50 heavy in a way where you really have no option but to guess. Um, 
that would be Cell, Kid Buu, and Bardock. Those characters, you have to just take a guess and hope you don't die. Yeah. So with the pro- the professional players that use certain Dragon Ball fighters characters, like if you think about Street Fighter and how the balance changes always affects the meta, like who they want to see on top. I guess what I'm asking is, do you always get so like uh, when you see like every team, every player have a cell on their team, or every player that has a cell and an Android 16 on their team? Like, are there any particular teams that you just struggle with? No, I think as a professional player, if you if you aren't comfortable with Cell, you're not going to like the game. Um, I do get scared when I see Cell, Kid Buu, Bardock, because those are the three best characters, and that team has kill combos. That That's the scary thing to me, is knowing that you can die off a jump light. Um, that, or sorry, if you throw a jump light and they perfect attack, you die, is what I meant by that. I think that team is scary because when you see it, especially from an unknown player, you know that they take the game seriously. Um, that is the most scary thing to me. I think when a top player picks them, I'm like, okay, no surprise, right? Like, that's fine. Um, there's no characters that I look at in this game and go, oh, no, I don't want to fight that, or no team compositions. It's just, it's just good old Dragon Ball, right? It's good old just fighting people. Um, it, we're at a level now where, like, there's nothing, there's no Zero Doom Virgil, right? Yeah. Cell Kid Boo is cheap, but it is not Zero Doom Virgil. That's true, that's true, man. So, um, out of the characters that have been announced, uh, uh-huh. what are some that you would like to see? I know you've mentioned Videl, uh, Chi Chi. Uh, would you be keen on seeing someone like Mr. Satan, you know, as a joke character? Maybe. I think I'd like Mr. Satan. I, I would think it'd be funny if they released Mr. Satan. I don't know if that would be good for the game. Um, or, like, if they released him, like, as, like, a funny pack outside of, like, the DLC cycle, like... Here's the Mr. Satan. And you have him. This two dollars, like, go ahead. He sucks. But they're not going to do that. Um, I think, you know, my, my answer still stands on Bedell. Uh, Chi Chi, just because I really like the game Dragon Ball Super for the PS2. I think it's actually a really fun game, and Chi Chi was top tier. Um, and I, I just like the concept of Chi Chi beating people. Um, other than that, like, Master Roshi would be cool. But a lot of the characters I want to see in Dragon Ball are already in the game. Um, to be honest, I, when I look at a character, I look more at their gameplay functionality than the character that they are. Um, I don't have a particular attachment to any Dragon Ball characters. What did you think, um, when they did release the, the roster? Cause I mean, obviously in fighting games, there's always a limited number of female characters. Um, yeah, obviously would you encourage there to be a lot, would you have encouraged a lot more female characters on release? Ah, uh, that's a hard question. Um, I would like to see more female characters, just because, I, you know, every other fighting game that Arxis releases has an equal balance, generally. But it's hard, because it's Dragon Ball, and it's kind of a boys' show doing boys' things. So, yes, but also, I traditionally don't play female characters. Um, in fact, I've only played one in my entire fighting game career. So... Uh, you know, as someone that plays big bodies, uh, when I saw E16, that was the character I fell in love with immediately. Um, and then Gotenks after I got my hands on the game. The, uh, the, the female character representation is more for other people, not for me. Who was the female character that you used? Uh, I used Ori in Undernight, uh, Undernight and Birth. Uniel. Oh, nice. Yeah, I wasn't good at Uniel, but I played Ori. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> um, but you're also a fan of, like, it, all Axe system games, right? Like Persona... Um, I feel like I'm rehashing the Born Free interview. I know, I just want to cover... Oh, dude, it's fine, things. it's fine. Uh, uh, <laughs> you're, you are forgiven. Yeah, I um, I loved Persona. I was not amazing at it. Part of that was my character. Part of that was Persona was the first game I ever entered a tournament for. Um, y- you know, I, I played Persona semi-casually. Um, I managed to slip into a top 8 once when the game was... I think it was actually the last tournament for the game. Um... So that was cool. That was my first top eight and my last top eight for three years until Dragon Ball. I really like that game. Um, I still do. I'm going to enter it in the side tournament at Evo um, just because I enjoy it, but I'm not going to do great in it. I wasn't great when I played that game. Um, Blaze Blue I like, but I, I fell off of when Persona came out and I realized what it's like to like a game, like a lot. And Guilty Gear I like watching, but I don't like playing it. It's, it's not for me. Nah, I hear you. I, I, I quite like Guilty Gear as well, but I just prefer watching. I would never invest the time to learn it. 
it's it's a re it has a really miserable mid game. I think it, Dragon Ball avoids that. I feel like maybe it's because I you know when I was at the mid game, it was the high level play. Um, but the mid game of Guilty Gear is is miserable. Mm -hmm. Just everyone's mashing. Everyone's trying to get their big damage combos. No one's really you know, knows how to counter everything because the frame data is so weird in that game, and it's it's hard. It's really hard. Get, getting past that is a nightmare. So, with Dragon Ball Fighters, apart from all the other games you've played, fighting game-wise, what's been the biggest learning curve for you? Um, doing nothing, actually, is really difficult for me, because doing nothing is actually very strong in Dragon Ball, especially on offense. Um, it baits Reflect, and then you can react. It baits Vanish, and you can Punish. It baits reversal supers, it baits a lot of things. I think doing nothing is a really valuable skill in Dragon Ball, even... But in a different way than Street Fighter. Street Fighter, when you think do nothing, you think, I don't want to press a button in neutral and I just want to walk. Dragon Ball has that in terms of the air mobility, but sometimes on offense, you just want to do nothing. Like, that's fine. That's okay. You don't have to pressure them right now, because they're still in the corner regardless. And that's why Gotenks is so strong, partially because you can do nothing and also put out ghosts, which allow you to do nothing, right? Yeah. Um, it's, it's just a really cool concept that you can not press buttons and have four projectiles that you can't super dash through. That's why I love the character. So, overall, what do you think about the balance, just the, the current version of the game itself, like, balance-wise? Like, do you feel like certain characters... Like, how do you think the game is in general, balance-wise? I think it's it's... It's a little poor, but not overwhelmingly so. Um, you know, some characters could use a buff. Frieza and Beerus, I think, need to be buffed. Nappa needs to be buffed a little bit. Brawly, a little bit. Um, a few other characters. Um, but I don't... I'm not a big fan of just changing... How do I put this? Okay, those three characters are too, are too bad. Nappa, Beerus, and Frieza. Nappa may be on the... The, uh, the lesser scale of bad. Cell and Kibu and Bardock are way too good. I think that if those two characters were equalized slightly, and they nerfed Super- or Raw Tag, I think the game would change a lot, actually. Um, I think that before any character nerfs have to happen, they have to be really careful when they nerf Raw Tag, because they will. Um, when that happens, the game will change. A lot. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, we recently saw Kazunoko take CEO with frickin' Yamcha, right? Well, the current meta in Dragon Ball is to play three points, uh, which would be, you know, that's why Cell, Kid Buu, and Bardock are so good, is that they're all point characters, but they all also have very good assists, specifically Kid Buu. Um, if they nerf raw tag and you can't cycle your team as easy, good assists suddenly become a lot more valuable on a team. And if Yamcha is already a valuable asset to Kazunoko's team, Yamcha's only going to get better. Um, which is fine, because I consider him mid-tier. Which is surprising, because during the Born Free interview, I called him ass. Um, which he still is at. He's still terrible on point. Um, but the game will change a lot. Bad, like, good assists on bad characters will become more valuable. The Gokus will get better, Yamcha will get better. They have to nerf Kid Buu assists, because that would get way better. Gotenks assists would get better. Um, and that's already potentially too good, but honestly, I don't think so. Um, it's it's going to change the game, and they have to be careful about how they adjust characters too much with that change in mind. Yeah, no, I agree. I'd just like to see them work on um, certain elements that already exist in the game. Like, I wish there was a way that they could kind of expand on the sparking idea, you know, like little things like that. Yeah, I you know, I actually like sparking, um, but I understand that other players don't. I... I like, I like sparking a lot, actually. I think it's a really well-balanced mechanic, but I understand it can be boring for some players. Like, with, with the meta being so 50-50 lockdown, where you have to spark on defense, first character, second character, I think it works really well. Um, <clears throat> in a meta where you spark last character, it becomes a really bad mechanic. Yes. Yeah. So, I, I like that. I like sparking. I don't think that needs to change personally, but I would not be opposed to them messing with the game. Like, I look at Tekken 7, um, and I think the previous one, where they have rage mode, obviously, when you have a certain amount of health, very low health. And I know some players don't like it because it's that whole, like, oh, you're doing bad, but we're going to reward you because you're not doing so good. I mean, do you believe it? Yeah, I mean, I know some people don't really like sparking and stuff, but I just wish they could kind of explore... I don't know, work on features that they've already got. 
Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> the way that Blaze Blue evolved is you could originally only burst on defense, and then they made it so you can burst on offense. I'm wondering if they'll make like a, a sparking light where you can burst mid combo. I think that'd be kind of interesting, mm -hmm. like a like a half duration sparking mid combo, and just like, hey, I need this character. Like, screw off and understand that like you lose your sparking. Like, there is no sparking here. You maybe have it for a second, maybe you don't have it at all. I think that could be cool. Like, I just don't want to eat this combo. Like, please, this character can't die. I, I think that's a really solid desperation, oh god, moment that would add a lot of tension to a Dragon Ball game. Um, if executed well. Or maybe everyone will just burst first combo so they don't die to sell perfect attack round start. Who knows? Do you think that the <clears throat> game works well um, because they don't have um, transformation characters? Like, it would be really cool to see Goku actually transform to Super Saiyan 3 and actually stay like that in-game. But what are your thoughts on that? I wouldn't like that. I, I think that the worst part about Dragon Ball games... Because I played Budokai, I played... I, I played Xenoverse and Xenoverse 2 just as, like, a button mashy bullshit game. Um, I don't like the, uh, like, the power-up mechanic because it's so exhausting to get to that point and, like, it's not that great. Um, you know, even in the characters in this game that we see transform, which is Frieza, uh, Gold Frieza sucks, right? Like, that's not, Gold Frieza's bad. Like, yeah. I think that it doesn't, I would rather them make a good character than make a good character and then have all the characters have gimmicks. Um, that said, I, I could see another stance character in the game, which could be Zarbon or base Goku. Like, like one of those two characters would be cool to, like, transform and match. I think that's a cool mechanic that isn't explored as much. Which, luckily, they're, they're exploring a lot of mechanics in the DLC, which I enjoy. I just wish they <laughs> gave us more super characters, you know, like, on release. Like, I mean, I'm, I, I, I'm all good for Dragon Ball Z characters, but I guess I was yeah. really looking for the, the big titans. Like, I was looking for merged Samazu in the beginning. I wanted, like, Jiren and, you know, all those guys from the beginning. Yeah, that would be cool. But... I think... How do I put this? I, I don't have an attachment to Super. Um, I, I like it, but I don't love it. I think that the roster that they released is probably the correct roster, and Jiren, at the time when they were making the game, might have been weird to include, because I don't even think the anime was done... No, the anime was not done when Dragon Ball Fighter Z came out, you know? Mm. Um... That would be a little strange to me. That'd be like halfway through the Cell Saga, and like, l l let's go back like <clears throat> 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. That would be like you're working on a game at the same time as the Majin Buu Saga, and Kid Buu shows up, and then three weeks later your game comes out and Kid Buu's in it, but the saga's not over. You know? And to me, that would be a little strange. I think that Jiren is DLC is correct. I just hope it's. I, I know it's not going to be, but I wish it would be Phase 1 DLC, rather than Phase 2 or whatever. Because he's coming out. Like, he's Jiren, you know? Yeah. Um, but mid-season would be a little weird, to me. Okay. What's your favorite uh, Saiyan transformation? Ooh. Well, do you even like the Saiyans? You know, do you have it in for the yeah. Lithians or the Arcosians? <laughs> I, I, you know, other races? I like Tian. Tian's dope. You know, like, I, I gotta be honest, my boy Tian's cool. He's my favorite character in Dragon Ball, by far. Um, is, is it the three eyes? Is it the bold head? I like his his style. His, like, hands Great. behind the arms, like, yeah. kind of underdog, but, like, can really fuck shit up if he, if he, like, puts all his energy into it. Like, that's a cool thing, you know? And, like, in Dragon Ball Super, yeah, he kind of got washed in the Dragon Ball tournament, or the, what, the universe tournament. But... He got really good. Like, he was still really strong comparatively. Like, he's the strongest human. That's cool. I like the underdog. Um, favorite Saiyan transformation? It's probably blue. I like I like the blue Saiyans. I think they look cool. Mm. That's that's the easiest answer. I think that the blue hair is pretty dope. But they haven't been. But the blue Saiyans haven't really been doing well um, tournament standing wise, have they? No, they haven't. They really haven't. I mean, Blue. I think Blue Vegeta's underrated, but I still think he's not amazing. Um, the only player really playing Blue Goku is Doza, who is a good player. Um, and Fame96 plays... I think he just plays Blue Vegeta at this point. 
But, like, the blues have light term representation. They're just not where they need to be. Blue Vegeta might be, but I, I think he's a little on the... Like, I, I put him, like, above Yamcha, like, for like if you want a list. Um, I think Blue Vegeta's underrated, but in general, they haven't been doing that great now. Especially with, like, regular Vegeta being so overpowering at the beginning of the game, right? Like, oh, why would you play Blue Vegeta back then? Yeah, I was so surprised when I <laughs> found out that Super Saiyan Vegeta was so much stronger than I thought. I felt I felt like I was betraying my, uh, you know, my youth because I was a big fan of Vegeta, but I always went for the, you know, the strongest level. Like, I went for Blue Vegeta over Super Saiyan Vegeta, and then after how many times I was getting wrecked by Super Saiyan Vegeta's, then I clicked on Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. That yeah, assist he's... is so BS. That assist is so BS, man. He was Doom. He was Doom. It was dumb. He just, he's an assist button. And it was the best assist in the game, and it's still one of the best assists in the game is the craziest part. They nerfed it, and it's still ridiculous. That's crazy. Like, that just shows how powerful that assist was on every team. I think your team was automatically worse if it did not have Vegeta on it. I think that character was the best character in the game when that game came out. Hey, now that's all good, Yohozi. Well, yeah. I guess we'll, uh, I guess we'll just take a break now. So, uh, yeah, for those who are listening, we'll be right back. Hey everyone, this is Justin Wong, and you're watching the Salt Shaker Podcast. How's everyone doing? Uh, to those who are here, those who have just joined us, I have got Yahozi with me for our second segment. Uh, so, Yahozi, I was wondering if you could tell us about your work uh, outside of gaming. Yeah, so I am trained as a graphic designer. Um, I would tell myself as a, as a pretty good one. Um, right now, I work in the gaming industry uh, doing mobile playable ads as the creative project manager. Um, which basically means, to distill that down, is when you're playing a game, and a game comes up, and it's like, Match 3, oh you did it, buy the game, you know, or play the game, because it's mobile, you don't actually buy anything until you play the game. Uh, I make sure those ads get created um, by the designers, and that it, design, that it plays well, and that it looks good, um, that it's not spammy, that it's fair, things of that nature. So if you see a good one of those ads, uh, chances are I did it, because there's not a lot of us. <laughs> there's only a few companies that do that. Are you allowed to tell us the kind of ads they, that they are? The kind of what, I'm sorry? Uh, the kind of ads, the kind of ones that show up? Oh, oh, the kind of ads. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like, uh, can I? Yeah, I think we can, because there are logos on it. Um, like that Final Fantasy mobile game. Um, Golf oh, did Clash. You, did you work on that um, Tactics Edition thing? No, I 
didn't. Um, and again, it's it's ads for it, so I don't really work on the games. But I work the on the advertising for the game. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So it's it's more like we deploy on a bunch of platforms, and so you can be playing Candy Crush and get an ad for, um, I don't know, Final Fantasy Fifteen or Realm Reborn. Or so when something. I downloaded Candy Crush for free and the ad pops up, that's that's you. <laughs> If you can play it, only if you can play it. Only if I can so, play it. Yeah, we don't do we don't do video ads. We don't do static ads. It's only if it comes up and it's like match three to win or like tap this thing to do a thing. Like that's that's us. We don't do static or video ads. That sounds like a fun job. Um, what got you into? Have you always been interested in digital design or media advertising? Yeah, you know, I went to I went to school for print, so I learned how to do posters, logos, branding, things like that. Um, but I was always a nerd, so I always I learned how to code on my own, made my own website, and got into the industry as a digital uh, designer, actually, um, primarily. So digital design agency rather than print, because um, that's just the way the world works now. You know, you you go to an agency if you don't know digital, you're screwed. Um, so I got a job doing that, and then I did email design for a while, and then I did real estate flyer, marketing, email design, website, etc, etc. And then I found this gig fairly recently. I've been there about two months, and it's freaking great. I love it. I love what I do. It, it's one of those things where, like, I'm passionate for Dragon Ball, but I'm also passionate for my career. Like, I love being a designer, genuinely. That's interesting to hear. Most um, gamers, they're always just fixated on the gaming, but I guess they have no ties to the working world. But you embrace both of them. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a busy life, don't get me wrong. It's it's kind of like working two jobs. I know playing video games professionally is seen as, like, not a job, whatever. It's pretty taxing, honestly. Um, but I've always been a hard worker, so I just do both. And that's fine with me. I, I like them both. I, ca I can't choose, so I didn't choose. But it is great how the stigma has changed. Like what you were saying, how people, you know, people see you as playing games isn't really working. But now... You know, players, you know, like your mate Justin Wong can just make a, a living out of it, you know, like their life can be based yeah. on this community and they can live off it. Yeah, and it's, it is, it, it's, it's going to sound ridiculous, but it is work, you know, like there's, there's a lot of coordinating, there's a lot of spreadsheets and like working things out, you got to train all the time, which sounds like, oh, you're playing Dragon Ball, but like, no, you actually have to focus on things maybe you don't want to focus on, because they're your weak points. Um, there's coaching, there's... There's freaking laundry every week, twice a week. I hate laundry for tournaments, it's the worst. Um, there's a lot of things you do. Flying all the time is, 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 is taxing too, you know? Like, the joy of going to a tournament kind of fades when you go to a tournament every two weeks, right? It just becomes part of your life. The tournament's still great, but the flying is always a disaster. So I, I think that, you know, understanding that, like, there is value in being a player and being a voice for a community and understanding that like it can be actual work you know is is pretty important i still struggle with the idea that i have to explain to people you know like being a fighting game player and, and kind of what i do in that you know i don't drink this is my entertainment this is my zen and it's really hard to to crack through to people they just kind of look at you and like you know there's no future in it man and it's like but you know, there's no future in fantasy football, man. You know, but people still do it. Right, exactly. Like, even if there is no future, like, you still... It's still your life, you know? And for some people, there is a future. Um, part of the reason why I'm a designer, not a full-time gamer, is, you know, I'm a believer... Yeah, one, I care too much about my design career, but also, like, I... It, it is kind of a contingency plan. Um, but honestly, it feels more like Dragon Ball is more of a contingency plan than... Than being a designer, you know, I love I love the game, but like, it, let's put it this way: if I could go, f you know, let's say I went super hard in Twitch and I started streaming regularly, and you know, my Twitch was doing good when I was streaming regularly, like went from zero to two hundred over like the course of like a month, and that's it's exponential, so it grows faster than that. Like, and I went hard into gaming. I could do it, but I I don't want to. I don't want to be a full time gamer. That's not who I am, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I am, even I am like... just. No, no, Sorry, go ahead. No, no, you go. I, I'm just someone that's really good at video games, and I want to be good at video games. That's all. That's all I want to be. I want to beat the hell out of people and make them feel bad. Like even being a streamer, I'd love. I would love to be a streamer, but I couldn't. To me, like I'd rather. I'm simple. I I just want to play the game. Setting up 
you know, the account and the donate windows and stuff, like, to me, that's just, like, that's just too much work. Yeah, I, see, I like that part. The part I don't like is, one, having to do gaming and full makeup. I don't want to do that. I, I'm, start, I'm even starting to show up in tournaments in, like, just a freaking hoodie. Like, I'm like, I don't care anymore. Like, I just want to play this game. So, like, the idea of putting on makeup to twit, to stream, um, I'd have to get, like, streaming from your bedroom is the most bizarre thing on the planet, and you won't understand that unless you stream. Like, like I need, like, a, a separate office to stream, if that makes sense. Like, that's all too much work. I don't want to do that. No, no, I just want no, to no, ball. You. Yeah. I mean, like, even the guests that we've had, the first thing that they ask, and I always forget to mention it, is that it's not live. Well, recently, the ones we've done are not live. It's pre-recorded. So when they get in that whole, oh, no, I need to, you know, are we live? I, I might need to have a shower. I have to do makeup. And with streamers, it's about, you know, like, pleasing the people. But, you know, FGC people, man, they just want to play the game. You know, who cares if I'm wearing yeah. last week's singlet, you know? Yeah, it's great. Who cares? I'm sweaty. I got home from work. I scooter home. That's a lot of work and effort. I don't care. I'm on the microphone, it's fighting games. I can show up to a tournament like this. I do every week. <laughs> so whatever. Yeah. Well in a way just, that's what they like, wanna see. Yeah, they wanna they wanna see you tired and exhausted and you sit down and you play Go Tanks and you make someone feel real bad. That's what people wanna see. That's what we want, man. That's what the people want. Absolutely. So like I just mentioned the word stigma before about like professional gamers. Um mm -hmm. you're, you're a redhead. You're a natural redhead, right? No, I'm not natural redhead. Uh, this is dyed. Oh, it's dyed. Oh, so you're na naturally a brunette? Uh, yeah. I'm a, my, my hair is like a dark brown, so it's like... It's a shade I don't really like that much, so I just dyed it red. Okay. Plus, well, I'm white as hell, so it fits. Well, paste, pasty white. <laughs> I'm pasty white, exactly. <laughs> so the redhead is less contrasting, I guess, is it's why, honestly. It just looks better on me. Okay. Well, no, well, to me, it looks good, and I guess I yeah. just to pose the the question like what do you think about redheads you know because blondes are a bit kind of blasé brunettes are i think are a bit more kind of intellectual redheads i don't know do you f uh, someone told me that i should never date a redhead because they think they they're just too crazy they're unpredictable they can get out of control what what, what do you think about that oh really i see well that's my I experience with redheads I've, I've i've only dated redheads now that i think about it really so so maybe that just means they're all lesbians maybe just redheads are lesbians <laughs> Redheads are lesbians, like. Yeah, that seems accurate. I'm checking. I'm I'm checking the numbers. Yeah. I can confirm that all redheads are lesbians. <laughs> oh, you just heard it here. Redheads are lesbians. Yeah. No, it's true. If, your butt. if you're listening to this, you just don't know yet. But trust <laughs> me, you'll figure it out. It's like your mind will be awakened soon. Yes, exactly. Um, if it's all right with you, Yohozi, I just want to go. I just want to mention a bit about um, your sexuality, because obviously Sonic Fox is homosexual, queer, and then yeah. you are lesbian. How was the how has the how was the initial response when you entered the FGC? It's quite a warming mm -hmm. crowd, but how 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 do people accept you know someone that's a bit more special? Oh, they don't care. They don't care at all. I, 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 there's a little bit of homophobia in the FGC, but like there's a little bit of homophobia Every everywhere. Yeah, in, in terms of the FGC, you know, it is it is the gayest blackest, most Hispanic, most Asian community on the planet. Like, everyone, no one cares. No one cares at all. It's not been a problem whatsoever. Like, at the FGC, I, honestly, what I like about it is that it is so minority-focused that anyone can, anyone can do whatever, you know? Sonic Fox is a gay furry, and everyone loves him. You know, like, if that can shine in your community, then what Living the fuck Living evidence, can? yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I love that guy. He's, he's freaking awesome. So, like... Everyone has been super accepting. No one cares. So, um, are you, are you in a relation? Where do you stand on relationships? Are you seeing anyone at the moment, or are you focused on gaming? Uh, I'm not seeing anyone. I'm not focused. I am focused on gaming. I'm not gonna lie. I'm focused on gaming. I haven't been going out a lot of dates, but I am single. Yep, I have been for about a year now. So, just been chilling. Me and Goku on a relationship. Hey, no, I hear you. I guess just it's always it's always easy to just kind of put aside other things and just focus on the inevitable yeah. task. Yeah, like, I moved to NorCal fairly recently, so, like, I got settled and then Dragon Ball came out, so it's like, I haven't really had a chance to date that much. Um, so, I'm fine with it. It's cool. Hey, that's all good. But have you have you had someone try it? Have you ever been given a pickup line before? Has anyone ever been that bad to try and do that to you? At a tournament? 
or just anywhere, or even if you've had like an awkward, yeah, or even just like an awkward uh, exchange between someone. Yeah, I had um, so at a tournament, someone was hitting on me, and I told them I was a lesbian, and they cried. That was really fun. <laughs> I think that I think that was the highlight, and it became like a therapy session where like I counseled them, and they're like, "Everyone I like is gay," and I'm like, "It's okay, dude." You'll find someone that's not gay. It's most of the women in the world, so don't worry. Um, that was probably the most awkward time I got hit on. That was at a tournament. Um, but yeah, I mean, you always get hit on. It's just life, right? You just go whatever. Oh. Luckily in San Francisco, no one bothers anyone, so that helps. Hey, oh my god, don't go on, hey. Like, I always hear women say, oh my god, why is such, why are the, why are the best men, like, gay or married? It's like... Hey, with women, it was the same thing. Maybe to him, you were just the dream girl that just oh. needed to be. Well, maybe he should try being a woman, and then, <laughs> then I'll say what's up. <laughs> I swear, all women say that. Like men have no idea. They really need to know what it's like to be in my shoes. Like seriously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he's a guy, so I don't give a shit. Like whatever. Like. Zero percent chance, you know. It's one of those things. It's like he'll just have to move on with his life, and he did. He probably was so drunk he forgot, but he definitely was drunk and crying at a porch outside CEO. Well, I mean, I give him props though, at least that he actually had the balls to kind of say something to you. But in that scenario, yeah, best it didn't happen. Yeah, 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 totally, totally. So you did mention previously that you wanted to go, that you're going to Evo. Um, mm -hmm. How would you describe the Evo experience? I would describe EVO as a lot of build-up. Um, EVO traditionally is, you know, for casual players, for people that play fighting games, maybe are not top 30, top 20, top 50. Um, it's the only tournament they go to. So there's a lot of stress to get as far as possible, and a lot of feelings of anxiety. Um, it doesn't help in terms of the build-up that the walk to EVO from the hotel is like 30 minutes or something. Um, but EVO is just like a bunch of nerds taking over Las Vegas and it feels incredible. Uh, I, I stand by that it's not my favorite tournament. I think my favorite tournament is still Combo Breaker um, and CEO, although the CEO was kind of whack, but we'll talk about that later, I'm sure. Um, EVO is a incredible experience and the spectacle is amazing the arena still blows my mind like the the top eight arena is still crazy to me um i freaking love that tournament what is it about combo breaker that you would put it above evo um it's easier to get games is is really the primary thing um there the food is cheap you know it's uh 24-hour venue is outstanding um like, if you want to play Dragon Ball at C at Combo Breaker, you can probably play for 18 hours a day and in the easiest way possible, right? You're at the venue, you can walk up to a top player and say, hey, let's play. Um, at Evo, casual stations are nowhere to be found. You have to know people to get into casual rooms. So, like, I want to play Dragon Ball right now. You can't just walk to a place and play Dragon Ball. You have to message people, and hopefully you're close enough with the top player where they'll tell you the room number and blah, 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 blah. Uh, combo breaker, you just show up. You just have a fight second hand, walk in, and be, I want to play right now. Let's sit down, Super Noon. Let's sit down, Goichi. Let's sit down, Dobara. And they'll be like, yeah, sure, sit down. Let's play. Okay. I guess just because Evo, you know, that I think of like, you know, that's like the heavyweight title fight, like, event. Like, I've never heard anything, or I've never heard anyone, you know, maybe not giving as less love to. To Evo, but no, it's it's surprising to hear it's surprising to hear you say that. But I mean, I have heard that it is literally a clutter fest. Like there's so many fucking people there, pools after pools after pools. Um, I, oh I, yeah, I've never been. I'd love to go, but I've seen video footage of. I, I don't know. I forgot who did it, but I've seen someone videoing a day at Evo. Fuck, that's intense. That's just fucking intense. It's it's also exhausting as a player. Um, this is my first time I'll be going as like a top player. And the reason why I'd be exhausting is, like, there are probably going to be about 5,000 people for Dragon Ball. The most, the biggest tournament I've been in has been 700 people. That is, like, an insane amount of matches to get into top 32, to get into top 8. That's crazy. Um, and, you know, with 5,000 people, the, the top X amount of people are still going to be the people that you see at CEO and Combo Breaker. But, like, I'm going to be playing pools 
Friday all day and Saturday all day, that's a lot of Dragon Ball. Like, that's a lot of cool play. Um, that I'm, that I'm scared of. <laughs> I'm not, I, I gotta grind through a lot of matches. Do you have a special training partner, uh, heading into Evo? Uh, I fight with Beneath, Apology Man, all the time. He lives maybe an hour, an hour and a half away. Uh, we meet up at all the locals, and we, we grind it out. Um, my other training partner is Super Noon, who lives in SoCal. So we visit each other like once every two months, once every month and a half, and play for a weekend. Um, those are my two primary training partners. Other than that, there's Dasa Bro, um, who is a really good Dragon Ball player. Uh, there's Two Gigabyte Combo, who's a really good Dragon Ball player, who um, was on his way to being like top 15 in the country, but he what? Rest in peace. He died to Mario Tennis Aces. Oh. May have, yeah. Now he's a Mario. Tennis unworthy. Bro. Yeah. Now he's just a, a Mario Tennis Aces player. Rest in peace. Um, and then Mike Muscles, who's a really good player. Uh, he doesn't like the game much anymore. He's more of a BB tag player, but we still play. Um, pretty much all of NorCal is is a fairly strong region, and we all grind together like probably once a week for at least a full day. Well, with you saying that, like, yeah, the Calif- like NorCal, SoCal, those regions in particular have really good bonding, like, player-wise. Oh, yeah, for sure. And we all like each other. Like, like we all get along really well, and, like, the fact that there's just so many good players in a small region. I think New York is better for that. I think New York has stronger players overall. Um, but the fact that we have so many players really helps a lot. Um, players in Texas, players in Florida, players in... You know, Detroit, the Midwest, they're just not, they just don't have the access, right, to play top level players all the time, 24 uh, 7. We do, that's nice, I take advantage of it. So, are you throwing that down as a as a strong statement, like New York, too good? Uh, I'll throw that down as New York is better. Um, I think okay. that's not a secret. I, I think that's pretty, you know, it has Hook and Sonic Fox. It has uh, probably the most underrated player, uh, Nico Maki, who I think is actually disgusting. Um, you know, it's it, it has good people. It has Grover. Grover's another good player. Um, it's just it has Lord Knight, obviously. Like it's New York is stronger than NorCal. New York is stronger than SoCal. If you combine the two, we're, we are in the running, but we're still not as strong. Like it would be like me, Apology Man, Super Noon, uh, Breaker Dave, and Cloud Eight Hundred Five, probably. Oh, and Christie. Like those are like the six people to beat um, in the region, but we're so far apart from each other it's a solid seven hour drive to go to socal so like we can't say that we're one region really yeah no i get you i just love evo i actually like re evo for a specific reason i just love that it brings players that you don't see that go out to tournaments so that's like the only online players and it's uh player it's people like uh maximilian you know like i love i love seeing them come out to an event like evo Oh yeah, it's it's cool seeing them. Um, I think I saw Maximilian, the only time I've seen him since Dragon Ball came out was actually at the Tekken World Finals, which is before Dragon Ball came out. Um, oh yeah, you went to that too, yeah. Yeah, 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 and uh, me and him were mopping up everyone in the in the casual suite, so that was fun. What's he like as a player? Uh, he's pretty good. You know, he's, he's, he's a serious, strong player. He's not like... Because I know he streams, gonna... but it's just like, I want to, like, amongst that scene, like, I wonder how he does. He is better than, I would say, 75, 75 to 80% of players at tournaments, if I had to give a percentage. He is actually quite good. He is not pro-level player, but he is quite good. Okay. Um, the problem with him is that, you know, he's a streamer, so he plays a game for two months, and then stops, and, then and comes back again. occasionally. Exactly. So he, when the game comes out, he's always a pretty strong contender. I fought him online, and I was shocked, actually, at how good he was. Um, but he, you know, he, uh, that's the streamer life. You play a different game after a couple months, because it doesn't stick around, or you're, it's just not your thing, you know? So is there anyone that's a YouTuber <laughs> or is an FGC person that you haven't met that you'd like to? It's a good question. I feel like I've met pretty much everyone at this point. You know, I've traveled to a lot of tournaments recently. I, I, I don't know of a top player I haven't met, um, or even a YouTuber that I haven't met. I think I've met pretty much everyone. So no. So no. All right. No, no. <laughs> well, then has there been someone you met that surprised you? Leffen. Um, 
Lethen is maybe the nicest dude I've ever met in my entire life. Man, honestly, from a standard picture, he looks a bit kind of shady, a bit dodgy. But, you know, that's just from first impression, my first impression. I, I, I am inspired by Leffen. I actually really like Leffen. And me and him have some serious real talks a lot about Dragon Ball. Like, he's one of my main people that I go to when I need support. Um, he is a extremely cool guy. Um, I like Leffen a lot. Um, and you know, I didn't really know much about him when it was Smash, except people said he was a jerk, so I thought he was a jerk. He's not at all. He's he's a really nice guy. Um, so he's the one that shocked me the most, I think, is just how much I liked him. Um, like, oh wow, like, you're really freaking cool. Because yeah, I think he's been, I think it's him that he's been banned on, like, forum sites because of his, not trash talking, but just, like, his interactions on forums and stuff. I think he's the player, yeah, but then you've met him and he's not hes not really a bad dude. I actually think as a player he's not that mean either. I mean, maybe on message boards occasionally, but as a whole, I think he's a really cool person. Even on Twitter, I think he's a cool person. Like, I don't, I have zero problems with him. I don't know what messages he's posted, so I can't comment on that stuff. But all I know is I like him a lot. He's a real cool guy. We, we get drunk a lot and go to bars and shit, so he's, he's cool. What do you normally drink? Uh, rum and Diet Coke is my classic. I I drink rum because it makes me the least sick. The least sick? Yeah, um, rum and vodka I can drink. I can't drink anything else, any other type of liquor. Um, and I'm a lightweight, so, you know, it's... Just it's just easy. It. Yeah, it's just easy. It's just, it's a classic. It's simple. I know what I'm getting, you know? So, like, you get along with Leffen and, you know, other big-name players. What about um, any of the female, any other female players in the FGC? I want to hear more about um, if you've met any of the, like, do you see many other female gamers on the scene? Yeah, so there's a Combo Queens meetup pretty much every major, um, where we all just get together and do a meet and greet and make each other feel welcome, and then we all kind of split up and get drunk or, like, hang out or whatever. Um, I, I'm, I'm not as close with the female side of the FGC as I want to be, just because there's no one that I've been like, oh, like, that person's awesome. Um, like, I'm really close with uh, someone named Kara, who goes by Kara Cancel, who is a Catherine player. Um, but after that, like, there's Kat, who runs, who is uh, Rich's wife, who, who runs, um, uh, sorry, Rick's wife, who runs Combo Breaker. Um, she's really cool. I like her a lot. Like, like she lives in NorCal now, so me and her are pretty tight. But after that, not so much, honestly. Um, yeah. I, I wish I was closer to more women in the FGC, but I'm really not, which is a shame. Is it more that they just kind of, as soon as the the, the, the event's over, they just kind of go back to their, to their own life and just, like, hang out with their own people? Because I feel like it, there's more of a camaraderie between the men, you know, between the males, you know, like, oh, you want to grab a beer afterwards? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I think it's more because there's more men in the FGC, right? Like, I, I think that's more what it is than the fact that, like, there's a, there's a, it, uh, the, the women go back and do their own thing. I think it's just that there's a lot more men, so it's easy to make friends with men. And plus, now that I'm a, you know, I, I spend most of my tournament playing games against other top players, and I'm the only female top Dragon Ball player right now, so because of that, I don't really just hang out with women at tournaments much. Um, yeah. Okay. So, with Evo, we did mention very early about your your placing at CEO 2025. Um, uh-huh. With Evo, are you wanting to crack top 24, top... I mean, obviously you want to, top 24, top 16. Like, what would be the ideal placement for you? I think top 16 would be a great placement. Um, I think you could actually do it. Like, I'm not yeah, just saying I, think, that. I feel I like you so could, too. actually, yeah. Yeah, I really do think so. Especially because, like... Um, it, I'm a I'm a char- I'm a player that likes familiarity. I, I don't adapt well to weird situations. Um, that's why that's a lot of why I lost that CEO without putting up too much of a fight against the players I lost to. That's not true, um, but I lost that character on familiarity more than anything, which is acceptable for me to lose to. I'm okay with that. Right, it's still early. Um, but after like like Apology Man got seventh right at CEO, which is Evo Light. Um, and at the last tournament, I beat Apology Man. So it's one of those things of like, okay, well, I'm ready to get there. I just need to clean up my game and be consistent, right? Be consistently strong. Um, if I placed top 16, I would be pretty thrilled. I've 
you know, I re realize this is coming from someone who has never made it out of pools at Evo. So, like, the idea that I can say that is crazy. Um, I have literally never made it out of pools. Ever. Not in losers, not in winners, ever, at Evo. Um, the only game, the only tournament I made it out of pools at where it was a major part of the tournament was CEO 2014 for Persona. Um, so, like, the, the, char the progression from back then to now is already insane. Um, I'd be disappointed if I didn't make top 24. I would be happy if I made top 16, and I do not think I'll make top 8, but I will try. If that's like the, the, the range of where I'd be happy versus disappointed, yeah. right? Well, in terms of, in terms of, like you were saying, your progression, like, 16 could definitely be the number you'd fit into. Yeah, I, you know, I, if I had to put a number on myself, I'd probably put myself, like, like, 26, 25th. Like, that, that seems like a reasonable number for me to be at in terms of, like, player rankings or whatever, which is stupid to put in a rank on yourself, but hey, I'm, I'm okay with it. Um, like, the idea that I can make top 16 is very much within arm's reach. So, I'm gonna go for it. You mentioned consistency, and I think about Takedo's consistency with Akuma. Like, yeah. despite all the changes, all the character additions and bugs and all that shit, you know, he's just still been able to achieve, just in general, you know. And, I mean, I think, you know, obviously you want to aim for that, and it's just so... But that's the thing, consistency is so hard. Like, how do you find your progression in terms of just hitting that level of consistency where you know that you can you can achieve it. I guess I just gotta be like Tokido and meditate for an hour before every match, you know? <laughs> like have that, have that like, cold Japanese steer. Yeah, did you ever see that dude like like he'll just sit in a room by himself an hour before his match and just close his eyes and like listen to the ocean. Like that's yeah, what he does. Yeah. Like that's crazy. Um but in terms of the get consistent, it's it's experience, right? It's it's about just correcting your mindsets. It's not really a gameplay thing like people think it is. It's a mindset thing. It's understanding that, you know, despite all your emotions, it's about will you do the thing that wins you the game or will you let your emotions get the best of you and you'll hesitate and you'll die, right? Or will you let your emotions get the best of you and you do something stupid and you die? Um, it, it's really about taking all those feelings and throwing them away, which I am not quite there yet. So consistency is not really a thing I'm focusing on. I am focusing on having a lucky hot streak and just every tournament getting more and more comfortable with the environment, which I guess is consistency, but it's more comfort for me. I think that's a better word. So finding more comfort rather than consistency. Yeah, being okay with being on stage, you know? Like, oh, um, yeah, dude, I will always struggle with stream matches. I have never, never done well in a stream match, but that's, that's just me from my own experience. Yeah, and, you know, I, I was weird in that I struggled with um, off-stream matches more. Um, I felt more serious on-stream, but now it's the opposite, which I guess is a good sign, right? Because if you're on-stream and you suck, it doesn't matter if you win or lose, right? You just lost, it's fine, yeah. you're just the player. But if you're good and you lose, that's bad. Um, but I'm no longer nervous in bracket, which is big progression from Combo Breaker where I was literally shaking before my, my first match of the entire tournament, you know? Like, I was shaking, I couldn't believe it. Um, that's gone, at least I think so. Um, we'll see at Evo. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot about just being okay with being on stage, okay with understanding that no one else matters but my Gotenks, my Kidboo, and my A16, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know how nerves affect how nerves used to affect you, but for me, it was as soon as I stepped on the stage, I could feel needles like jabbing into my leg when I stepped onto the stage. Um, but it's good that you've gone past that. Oh, I haven't, but I'm starting to. You're starting to. Right? You're starting to. I'm yeah. starting to. It's it's again, it's it's a it's a process that people do not realize unless they actually have been in that situation, where going from being bad to good is a big leap in terms of your expectations and other people's expectations for you, you know? Um, for me, it's, it's a lot of, weirdly, um, I got the advice to monitor my heart rate, which helped a lot, a lot at, combo, at CEO. Um, like, <clears throat> if your heart rate's too low, when you start losing in a match where you feel you shouldn't lose, you panic. So you've got to raise your heart rate, and then when you're going on stage or you're fighting a really good player, 
and your heart rate's too high, you gotta lower it. That helps me a lot. Also, it's breath as well. Like I've seen, like I would think some players when they panic, they they hold their breath in the chest area. Obviously, when it's like in a clutch moment, right? And they're kind of too and tight and too tense. Yeah, yeah. That's that's also part of the heart rate, right? Because if you're holding your breath, your heart rate's gonna go up. So part of lowering your heart rate is big deep breathing. Um, and then to raise it, you like hit your leg, you slap your stick, you kind of shake your arms a little bit. Like you get yourself in like a more serious mindset than just like. I'm gonna body this guy and move on to round two of pools. Like you can't think that way, you know. You got to You got to take every match seriously. So, has hot tip for people hot performing. Hot tip, definitely. Hot tip. Well, has there been a match where you've just completely been underprepared? <clears throat> oh yeah, of course. Um, I'm trying to think. A lot of my matches at Summit, I was really underprepared um, mentally more than gameplay wise. Um, I think. My match against Sonic Fox at CEO this past weekend, I was underprepared. Um, I did not know how to fight A18 at all. I think it's natural to be underprepared pretty often when a game is so new, right? It's about how quickly you adapt to weird situations, I, I think, at least. But also, like, if everyone's using Android 16, you're going to be studying the 16 more than the, the lone dude who's going to bring an 18 or something, you know? It's like, you train, yeah, for, yeah, you yeah. train for the popular characters. Yeah, that's another thing I that's another thing that I think a lot of players, like even me, I know I still need to work on, is, is studying the not-so-familiar characters. Yeah, no, I, I'm like, I agree. And actually, what I did after CEO is I learned how to fight. Because I lost to an 18 and then I lost to a Brawly. So I went home and I studied the Brawly matchup, who I think is a bad character, but I lost to because I didn't understand what was happening. Because we don't have Brawlies here in NorCal, really. Um, there's one decent player, but I don't know their name, and they showed up to one tournament once and then never saw them again. So whoever you are, come back so I can learn the Brawly matchup. <laughs> come back! Come back! I need to learn that big boy. <laughs> Sweet. Well, I guess we'll just take our second break now. Thank you, for okay. the, thank you to those who have been here. Uh, who have joined, we are coming back very soon. I was just wondering, because I've, I've just had a recent experience, um, what's your experience been like with hate mail, you know, when people just kind of, uh, uh, they're sour to you, you know? What, what, it, what's your hate mail being like? So, I have two types of hate mail. I have PSN hate mail, which is always the best. I love PSN hate mail because they're stickers. And responding to hate mail with stickers is freaking dope. Like, you'll get someone saying like, oh, you dumb bitch, you just grab all the time, and that's cheap, or like, oh, stop 2 aging me, whatever. And then you just respond with a picture of a cat, or like, some dude throwing dice, or like, just a guy breakdancing, and they just gotta hold that. You know, they don't know how to respond. That's my favorite part about hate mail. So um, Twitter's over. a little... Yeah, basically, you just respond with nonsense, and then they get really confused. Or you say that you're drunk, and then they get really mad, because they think that, you know, I can't even beat some drunk girl. Or they, they don't know who I am if I get hate mail, usually on PSN, so it's like... I get drunk, like, who's this guy that beat me? Like, well, actually, I'm a girl and I'm drinking, so hold that. Um, Twitter hate mail is a little different. Twitter hate mail is a little bit more vicious, I guess, because it's people that know who I am. That one I'm not as cool with. Um, I get, you know, I have a lot of fans and supporters in the FGC, but I also have a lot of people that think that I suck. 
um, especially after my summer performance, which is fine, you know, if you, if you think that. But a lot of really nasty messages come my way, and you gotta learn to just, like, ignore them, you know? Like, just, like, live your life and just pretend that they ain't, they ain't there. Because they aren't, you know? They don't know what it's like to be on the stage. They don't know what it's like to be competitive in a game for the most part. So it's, it's interesting to, like, watch that dynamic unfold, I guess. To me, it just takes such... To me, I see it as just too much effort when rage quitting. You know, like, getting up off your ass and yanking your cord and turning off the console or PC or whatever. Like, to me, that's just work. I don't... I, I hate that. But, I mean... Like, to me, I don't see how people... I just don't like the idea... I can't even grasp the idea of rage quitting. Yeah, I've never rage quit in a fighting game. I don't think. I might have when I first started. Um, but it's if I ever rage quit, it's more of embarrassment than actually being mad. I find myself not getting mad when I play fighting games, really. Um, I threw my first thing at a tournament recently. That was cool. It wasn't a stick, it was a lighter. But I needed to throw something. <laughs> that felt good. No, definitely, man. You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta do, you know, just to... Whatever, just to calm the nerves. So what's yeah, been, exactly. So what's been, like, your fans to haters ratio uh i'd say it's it when i'm on stream it is 10 times haters to fans but when it matters which is during the grinding during the in-betweens i'm probably way more fans than haters that's just the way it goes right hmm. like when you get blown up on stream it happens and you get people that send you angry messages um i got a lot less at com at ceo than combo breaker probably because i performed better and a lot less at CEO than Summit. So I guess that shows personal improvement, right? Yes. But it's interesting yeah. just seeing fans, how they can be behind you, you know, be behind you one minute, and then as soon as you do poorly, they just kind of trash on you, or even just go like, oh, I don't really think your hosie's where she was five months ago. Yeah, I mean, it's it's different because I already, I always am improving. So actually my fans have been pretty much behind my back. I don't think that anyone's done a heel turn on me. But if they do, let it be known, I will forget your name and not know who you are. So Yohozi so, Yo will just dismiss you. Yes, Yohozi will dismiss you from my brain. You are gone. That's Goodbye. Cool. That, that's that's being classy. You know, you're not going to be yeah. like, you know, you're not going to be lower than them and call them shit. No, no, no. That's not that's not who I am. That's that, I'm too nice for that, I guess. Well, like with the hate mail, because you're a girl, like, I, I, I'm just hoping that they're not too atrocious with what they say. Like, oh, you know, if you're real, send me a pic. Send me something Oh, else. yeah, I, I, get, I get that shit all the time. You just learn to... My DMs are a nightmare, but you just learn to accept that, like... You, it's it's weird. When it, when you get a lot... Like, when you get a little bit of hate mail, it's, it's hard, right? Because you don't know how to handle it. When you get a plenty, it's like, ah, whatever, it's just another one of those. But I still get more fan mail than hate mail, so that's A plus in my book. What's been the most touching thing that a fan has told you? I got a lot of touching messages after Summit. Um, it, it's hard for me to like call it a specific one. Um, honestly, mostly because on Twitter, I it's it's always through Twitter. I, there was one that really hit a chord, um, but unfortunately, I don't remember their name. Only because I remember avatars, not names, and I can't really describe an avatar to you. Yeah. Um, but I, I sent messages back to them saying how much I meant to me. So you know who you are. Um, Thank you to your avatar. Thank you. Whose thank name you. I forget. Thank, thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Avatar. <clears throat> Mrs. Avatar. I think it was Mr. Avatar. Thank you, Mr. Avatar. Mr. Avatar. So, um, well, throughout this interview, you've seemed quite open and, you know, forthcoming, and I really thank you for that. Um, yeah. Could you tell me, t tell us one thing that most people at first wouldn't know about? Ooh. Something that most people wouldn't know about it's me. It's always intimidating, you know, meeting pro players and knowing what the the best impression is to, to do. Like, is there something that most people wouldn't know about you? It's a good question. Um, I will say that if you do want to meet me, I think the worst thing you can say is sorry for wasting your time or anything of that level. Um, I like playing Dragon Ball, period. I don't care how bad you are. I don't care how good you are. I just want to play. So... I, you know, the, the thing when people meet me most and they want to play is like, oh, like, you bodied me. Sorry for wasting your time. That's the one thing I don't want. In terms of, like, to actually answer the question, that's that's really difficult. Um, like, I am so open about my life that it's hard to really, like, 
nail down one thing that people don't know about me. I mean, I'm pretty open about being a lesbian in NorCal that plays video games competitively, right? Like, that's kind of my life. And being a designer is in my Twitter bio. Um, I, I can't really think of one, to be honest. Um, I'll, I'll stew on that question. I'll stew on that question. I'll think of something. Okay. Um, well, has, has there been an experience uh, throughout your FGC life that you've been truly grateful for? Like, it could be even as simple as meeting someone or just <clears throat> doing something for a fan. Getting voted into Summit, I think, was is the highlight. You know, it was by far the best tournament I've been to in my entire life. Um, I have zero regrets about going, despite getting bodied. I, I think that it was an incredible experience for me. And, you know, I, I posted tweets afterwards about how upset I was and how I wanted to leave. But that was the competitor in me speaking, not the not the person in me, if that makes sense. Yes. Um, you know, that was me being just disappointed in how I played. Um, I, was, I was sad. Like, I'm not going to lie. I was sad at Summit. But um, even at the event, like, on Sunday, I just felt great. Like, I just... I, I couldn't believe I was there, that this was happening to me, and that people voted for me to come, and I was a good enough player to even be considered. Um, that was pretty mind-blowing. Um, well, you couldn't have been surprised by the votes, like, people wanting you in. I was. I was surprised. I was, like, I, I wasn't at first, and then I saw how many votes other people were getting, and I'm like, oh. Oh, that's a they lot really of votes. They want me. They, not even that, it's they really want other people. Like, am I gonna make it in? I don't know. And then I clutch it out at the end and I'm like, okay, I made it. That's a that's a big deal. <laughs> like, I'm the first woman to get voted into Summit for fighting games, which is cool. Um, I think there was, game. yeah, there was one other woman for Dota, I think, um, or League or something. I think it was Dota. I, I don't think they do League. Um, so I wasn't the first, but it was it was really a cool thing. To be respected that much in the community to be to be voted in that meant a lot to me to everyone who voted okay so i'll just pose something hypothetical to you uh if mm -hmm. you were on a desert island to live like well you know if you're stranded uh what are three things that you would want to have with you <laughs> what can help me get the hell off that desert island i think is the first question do i have to live there could it be like how do i escape yeah it could be how you <laughs> escape i'm just always curious as to you know like like, yeah, I guess it's just an interesting question, you know, like, the items that you'll choose, like, whether you're going to okay. stay there or you're going to try and bail out. I'm practical. I would try to leave. Here's how I would do it. I would bring... I'm trying to think what's the most efficient. I would bring a fishing pole, for sure. That would be, like, A1 with... With string, I, I think that would be implied, like, enough string to replace the string if it breaks. If not, then I could probably find, like, I'd make it work or whatever. Fishing poles, number one. Um, <clears throat> I would bring... God, what do you need to make a raft? Like, an actual like, raft? Uh, like, rope? Yeah, rope. I mean, you could... Yeah. I could probably... I could probably... Because I'm getting, you know, like, yeah, wood, wood rope, uh... Would, would it have wood on the island? Like, like it's... Yeah. it's uh... Yeah, yeah okay. we'll, we'll just say it does, so you wouldn't even have to say wood. Yeah, actually, I yeah. kind of messed up there. I should have been specific on the island, but yeah. Yeah, if it was, like, truly nothing, then, it, you know, I'd just live... I would die. Like, <laughs> you know, like, there has to be enough to live. Um, I'd bring... You know, you can cut down trees. I'd bring rope, and here's the weird one. I would bring gasoline, right? Yeah. So here's why. You, you, you build a raft, right? You got rope, and you can cut down trees on your own. You got a fishing pole for food. I'm I'm smart enough to know how to get groundwater, um, so you got all that stuff. Get on your rafts, and when there are planes nearby that are not commercial airliners, you pour the gasoline out and then you lay it on fire so people know where you are. That's what I would do. I would get the fuck off that island and get the attention of a plane ASAP. Because <laughs> planes will notice when there's fire in the ocean and they'll come get my ass. And they'll be like, you gotta play more Dragon Ball, girl, you ain't dead yet. And they'll get back, and there'll be five new DLC characters, and they'll be dope. Okay, <clears throat> well, interesting. Very practical. Yeah. I don't know, when I was yeah. asked it, I was very, like, my answers, like, I wanted to stay on the island. I think I said something like, pure, I forgot who asked me, but I was like, purify, water purifier, beaker. And then the person was like, wait, 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 you wouldn't want to leave? And I was like, oh. I didn't think that was an option. <laughs> I guess it's no, just a nice way. I, I guess it's just a nice way of saying if you're the type wanting to stay or go. Obviously, no, I, you I hit the ground running. Forever. 
I'm not gonna be like like Tom Hanks and fucking marry a basketball or a volleyball or whatever. I wanna get the fuck off there. No, get me the fuck off there. I wanna go <laughs> home. I won't be like Tom Hanks and wrap the fuck out of there, but I'll have gasoline so I can attract planes. That would be my that would be my plan. Wow. How would I light the gas on fire? I would figure it out. You'd figure it out, yeah. I mean you just take a twig and you spin it on a stick. Yeah, on caveman lighting fire stuff. style. <laughs> I could probably do that. I learned that like a long time ago. So my my people I lived with growing up are all outdoorsy people, surprisingly. So they taught me a bunch of weird shit. <laughs> oh, cool. Now thank you for that. Um, okay, well I think you've already you've already answered this before, but um, about being in awkward situations with with players. Is there someone that you wouldn't want to be alone with, player wise? Because they're a um, troublemaker, or because they just like getting you into shit? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, I feel like I've been in enough Walmarts with Hook Gang God and Super Noon and all those players where I know that they would get me into some real fucking trouble if I was around them for too long. But I kind of like trouble, so that's cool. Like, that's fine with me. I don't really have that feeling to anyone who plays Dragon Ball, to be honest. I, it would, it'd probably just be a Japanese player, because I wouldn't know how to talk with them. I know that's a lame answer, but um, I, I'm not really, like, I'm cool enough with all the Dragon Ball players where it's like, ah, no one's gonna get me into some real shit I don't want to do. <laughs> Alright then. Well then, I guess I just have one final question. I'll state yeah. the question. Yahosi. Uh-huh. Who is your fighting game waifu? Ooh, fighting in character, right? I would assume. Oh uh, yeah, fighting character. Yeah, um, yeah. Some people, I don't know, haven't answered it. So you know, like, just oh, if you need to, you can open it up. But fighting game waifu, if you can. I'm trying to think. I mean, I have the obvious answer. I'm just trying to think if there's another answer. In. <sighs> It might be Milia. It might be Milia. My my initial answer was Ori. Well, I thought I, so too. I yeah, but I think it's Milia, honestly. Like, I like how Ori plays, and I like that she has a a dude that with a sword, and I like the way how when she walks, her heels click on the ground. Like those are like the weird things that I like about that character. But would I actually want to marry Ori? No, it'd be Milia. Milia's dope. So Milia. Milia. She's beautiful. She has dumb mix up. <clears throat> She's the waifu. She has a she has a license plate on her head. That could probably go. I, I think of everything that's that's the biggest uh, red flag. But Milia. Yeah. So if you ever got to meet Amelia in real life, like you'd take her off the market? <clears throat> I don't know if Milia's a lesbian. I don't know if she's into that. I don't know if she's bi. Let's she say probably. for you. Let's say for you, she would. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. A hundred percent. Like in a heartbeat. Yeah, that bitch should be gone. <laughs> it's just like, nah, she's mine now. Yep. Yep. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. Oh, cool. Ah, cheers. That was sweet. Yeah. Oh, cool. Well, yeah, we've uh, reached the end now, so I just want to say thank you to Yahozi for her time and mm -hmm. her, her stories. Um, is there anything you'd like to say? Any shout outs or? Anything you want to put out there? You, you know, I, I shouted them out a few times, but shout out to everyone that voted for me for Summit. I am sincerely appreciative. Um, it was an excellent experience. Thank you again. Um, to the Dragon Ball community for being easily the dopest community I've been a part of. Um, they are by far the nicest and most cooperative people I've ever met. Just to give a, a, another anecdote I thought of, um, I know it's it's the closing, but you know when the when the game came out, everyone thought it'd be saga based, where like yes. it's Japan, Japan versus USA is the X saga, and then Sonic Fox is the Cell saga. It feels more as a community that we are all Earth, and we're all training to get better because some other planet is gonna come and fuck us up. There's it's, another it's impending so, doom. It's yeah. it's so collaborative between the American and the Japanese players. It shocks me. Um, I, I, like it, it's a community that just cares about getting better, and I've never been a part of that before. I've, every community I've been a part of has been, um, who's the best, and if you're not the best, you're whack or whatever. Dragon Ball just—we all just want to get better. Like we're all hungry for it. 
Um, so like that community, um, everyone I've shouted out, Apology Man, Dasabro, Leffen, Super Noon, uh, Cloud805, frickin' Nakiel, um, Lord Knight, um, Dogura, Tachikawa, Goishi, all those players, I give them all shout outs. Um, and then all my fans. Everyone that says hi to me at a tournament, I love you. XOXO. It is Yahosi. Uh, once again, thank you for your time and thank you for those who have been listening. Uh, yeah, take care. We will see you again sometime. Adios.